I am joined by the one and only PS1, and if, and if it sounds like we've been hanging out together all day, we have. Mr. PS1, Sean Dyke Face Son, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well. I've had great series in the cafeteria. <coughs> we had cap title defense, and now we are finishing uncap, no cap on it, and let's see if Mr. Geyer here can start out, and yes, he starts out very well. Now, Rob Geyer will be starting off for Powerhouse. Richard McCone is his partner. He'll be coming in, and he feels like it. Against he won't be coming in for three frames, that I will say, because this is uncapped tag. If you were around with us earlier when we did the tag team matchup, the rules are the same. <coughs> bowler number one must bowl three frames. Mm -hmm. Then bowler two must come in and tag. You must tag four times, no more, no less. Nick Gavin starting for Arsenal. Nick Gavin leaving a 3 5. Yes. I'm sorry, 2 5. Yep, definitely he's a 2 5. The aptly named Winter Soldier on the back of his jersey because it is indeed winter and it is cold here. Hopefully, um, he doesn't go cold early. Yeah, Nick's got a lot of nicknames. He goes with back row bingo. He's to all sorts of silliness, which is what makes him fun. It'd be more fun for him if he made the spare, and he will. Yep, all over that, no problem. Converts to 2 5, just fine. Arsenal has been tag team champions a number of times. Rob Geyer has been tag team champions a number of times. However, not with Richard McCone. Mm. He's been a tag team champion with Tyrone Powers. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's right. Oh, Tyrone Curry? I'm sorry, Tyrone Curry, yes. Yeah, yeah, Chef Curry. What up? Top shrimp. Gavin right now looking for his first strike in the match. He gets it. Yes. And Gordon has mentioned down and in, and you get no better with a down and in game than Nick Gavron down himself. Down and in. Down and in. Down and in. Rob Geyer, the man of many emotions. Indeed. It says in the back of his jersey. Let's see if the man of many emotions can be the man of many frames, closed frames, that is. Guy up first, he didn't like that shot. No reason why. He's looking at his foot. Mm. Thinks he stepped on something. Mm. What he stepped on was good luck. Yes, he did. A whole pile of good luck there. And a that's whole pile of good luck. Well, he's shaking, yeah. shaking his shoe because he thinks he may have had a good pile of something else. Oh, good. He's shaking his shoe and at least not shaking his head. You know, when Maybe he's both. Yeah, when you're bowling in the winter, you got a lot of things. You know, people may have been walking in here, a little rock salt, maybe a little moisture on their shoe. So you're going to see a lot of different things, especially when it comes to approaches. Could be rock salt. Could be rock lobster. Uh -huh. Rock lobster? Yeah. Let's see if we can rock all 10 pins back. Yeah, guy's looking to rock three in a row, and he does. Oh, exotic. <clears throat> I usually say down and in. Rob Geyer has found something where he's throwing the ball on the outside, and it's mm -hmm. curling back in. No down and in needed, at least not yet. Yeah, especially when you got the kind of spin, spin he has with a little slight lob on it. Gavin right now going in for the arsenal. This is his third frame that he has to bowl in for right now. He may mm -hmm. stay or he may not. We'll find out momentarily. Third shot here, looking for his first double in the match. He'll get it. Okay. There we go. There we go. Why doesn't he do that during league here? The, the, where's the, uh, <laughs> and as all you, you know, pointed out, down in, you down know, Nick in the now Nick and I and Audrey are chatting here because Nick does bowl league here, which leads me to beg the question always, it always seems like when I'm covering a match that the Arsenal is in, it always happens to be in a house that they bowl league in. And I always question, why are we doing this? And five print goes down. And the five Three try to stay alive. Gavin. Except I will say this. The, the one house that Gavin happens to be spotty in because he doesn't listen to me is Buller City. What's that? Schnookums, I am wondering why you don't go down in usually during league and it takes once in a blue moon or every other third Sunday for you to actually listen and do what you should be doing. I mean, I shot 700 with rubber last week and 769 this week. I figured it out. <laughs> well, let's see if you figure it out this evening. And for all the wrestling fans out here, if, um, if you're going to watch and you're going to see AJ Styles, you get a chance to see his doppelganger right here in the form of Nick Gavron. And right there, we see a 10-pin lead for Rob Geyer. So it goes from potential 300 max to 279 max, and it has shifted into a potential 290 max for the team of Snell and Gavron. Well, Nick Gavron has a lot more hair than AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. And he really has a lot more hair than Rob Geyer. 
about similar length, especially now. Rob Geyer definitely does not have the same hair length as uh, Nick Avron. He can make 10 pins, though. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. That was a powerhouse of a 10-pin conversion. Tags yep. in for the first tag to Rich Pacone, looking for his first tag team title. We'll see what Mr. McCone does. I'm pretty sure this is not his first stop over at Buller City. <coughs> but this is his first stop over for me commentating. Let's see if this is a good debut for him. That ball strike. Ooh, that looks nice. Very nice. Very nice look. Nobody intimidated by Buller City so far. No, not at all. At least at least in this match so far. Hasn't been the case um, in the in the other two matches. So with McCown or McCone, or however you'd like to pronounce it, going in for the first shot, that is tag number one. They have to have three more tags. Arsenal has not tagged anybody in yet. And I think that's because Nick Cavern wants to throw another strike on this line. And he does. There you go. Look, not just how the ball is landing and where the ball is landing, but all the pin action that he's getting when he lands it. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I agree with that. You that know, is impressive. A lot of forward roll. Now the lone female on this pair, actually the lone female that we've seen today, Audrey Snell is up, it's her first tag. Obviously she's very good because she's only uncapped and there goes the 10 pin. Very good. Five yeah. in a row for Arsenal. And basically you're you're thinking, well wait, but throwing all our strikes? Yeah, this is uncapped. Mm -hmm. Action here is gonna come fast and furious, especially because these are two teams. These are two teams that have a quick pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one's gonna be fast they, and yeah, furious. They don't like to, even when they're not striking, they don't like to slow the pace down. Nope, they do not. You know how appropriate they have cannons on their jersey because they're already firing shots early. Everybody's firing shots. Rouse coming up, there's another one. But we're right now we're looking at 290 versus 279. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Looking at well, uh, a slew of strikes, a sea of them, if you will. Yes. Here in the city of bowlers here in Hackensack, New Jersey. Yeah, we're already in the seventh frame. We're I mean, already how many there. minutes has this gone? This cat probably has, is definitely on less than 10. Uh, with practice, not even 10. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's McCon right now looking for three and or no 10 pin. Oh, uh, yes, and Pacon has, is being picked on by the 10 pin right now. And maybe seeing a 7, 8, 9, 10 strategy. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, you already have one tag in the seventh frame. More importantly, though, you've given Arsenal a little bit of a breather at this point. Now, now I have a little bit more room than they, what they would have had, and they're going to have even more if he misses a ten. He gets it. Yeah. No, no blink, no blinking so far in terms of closing frames. No blinky, and here's tagging number two. Nick Cavins coming in seventh frame. Seventh frame coming in. Tag number two, four. The Arsenal. We're talking about six, seven, eight, nine strategy. That may be what the Arsenal's looking mm -hmm. at. They can, they, they do have a little bit of a margin. If they don't strike, and they assuming they make the sphere, they'll still be up by double digits. If he strikes right here, which he's Ooh, not going to do, never mind. Losing a little count. Take 74 to the front desk, take 74. He does, so instead of being up by double Take digits, if he makes a spare, they'll Take be up by single digits. Yeah, one of those makeable, miserable situations. Yes, sir. Two, four, five coming in. Two, Looks four, like he'll five. Make the spare anyway. Take it out. Tag number three coming in, and this is a very smart move. Powerhouse only on a spare. Mm -hmm. So this is when I would stick in Audrey also, and that's when they're doing it. Yeah. Eighth frame, this is tag number three. The next time Nick tags in, he's finishing the game. Yep, we're seeing strategy of two teams that have been here before. Yep. Uh, with the exception of one Rich Pacone, who is definitely, you can tell, has thrown the ball before, throws the ball well. Everybody. Uh, he's he's thrown the ball really well. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of simplified um, versions of the game. Um, focus on pocket control. You get the carry great. If not, you don't make a mess. Rob Geyer uh, coming in for tag number two. Powerhouse yep. has two left. Arsenal only has one. <coughs> Geyer coming in eighth frame, looking to keep the lead. Oh, the sloppy, oh. but it looks good up there. Even Audrey says, wow. Yeah. A little Marvin Gaye carry, mercy, mercy me. Yeah, now I'm not sure I necessarily agree with this tagging strategy here. 
because again, they have two tags left on Powerhouse, and they're sticking in the guy that just left a 10 pin in the seventh frame. Mm. Not, uh, not sure I like this strategy. That? You don't like it? Eh, not sure. Well, I wouldn't mind doing a double cram over the 10th frame, and oh. that'd be one of the reasons why I didn't like it. That's an, clearly an over-adjustment there. 3-6, I'm sure Arsenal has no problem with that strategy whatsoever at this point. Well, but considering the spare is made, and a good probability of making that, it, we're looking at, dare I say, potential 238. Yeah, but the issue, though, is that they really needed a double here. Oh, yeah, yeah, Nick says I wouldn't have complained on the burn. Sure. Yeah, I believe that. No, I don't. A.K.A. Uh, Mr. Rotator Cup, who has slowed down yeah, in yeah, did you bring 16. Winnie, uh, is Winnie the Pooh there in the Arsenal Bowling? Yes, Winnie the Pooh's there in the Arsenal Bowling Equipment. So if you'll notice, Nick and I will draw at each other. It is all in fun. It is all in love unless Nick starts losing, in which case he'll be uh, saucy, as we say. Gavin right now looking to double take it nicely going in set frame. He does. Mm -hmm. Gavin, that is the fourth and final tag. So they are all good. Looking at potential 257? 267. Uh, 267. The best of that a powerhouse can do is 238. And I believe the bad strategy of tagging may come in and doom powerhouse here game one. I say bad strategy. Of course, people will, uh, let's just say, agree to disagree with me, but. There's no reason to stick somebody in there that just left a 10 pin and you need a double and you're sticking him back in and he just left a 10 pin just like that. Oh, but the 10 pin falls down. That will be game number one going to Arsenal. Mm -hmm. w way to lock it out with that. Carries up the 10 pin. Yeah, assuming that Nick Gavin keeps the ball in the lane and yeah. doesn't feed it to the gutter monster, Arsenal will take game one. We all know about the gutter monster. Yes, the gutter monster. staring at me like, Gordon, you're whack. Yes, I am. The gutter, mo the gutter monster is always hungry. Gutter monster is always hungry. He keeps it very far away from the gutter monster. And strike. Very good. Slight area check there. Maybe um, projected the ball right a little early just to see what he what it can get. He had mm -hmm. room for error considering that they locked it out. Why not see what else is out there? Now, this is the stuff that I thought that some of the other matches that we saw early on today should have done, and Nick Evans actually doing it. Which is again one of the reasons why they're multi time tag team champions. Indeed. All right. Uh, I will go call the game. I'll be back. And as you can see, Nick Gavron has now broken the lanes here at Bowler City. I blame Nick for, for breaking the lanes at Bowler City, by the way. I don't blame the alley. Damn cannons. <laughs> well. On this Saturday evening here in Bowler City, it has definitely been uh, a city of strikes. And Arsenal right now showing why they are former uncapped tag team champions. Rob Geyer um, and Rich McCone, nothing to be ashamed of in game one. This is a statement game. Statement has been made, but it is, like I say, often it is a marathon, not a sprint. But it's a sprint of strikes. They hit the ground running and no one has tripped up. You see more strikes in the other team. Nobody has closed frames. I'm sorry, nobody has open frames, rather. During this time, take the time to remind all of you who are already involved and already signed up. Good luck at Unholy Alliance coming around the weekend of February 4th, Bolarama, New Newcastle, Delaware. And feel free to get I've yourself already... a franchise in if you Absolutely. don't have one. By the way, UBA does have, I uh, actually just made the call for, uh, for the next season. So if you're on a new team and you want to join, you're more than welcome to. If you're on a just forming team, eventually in a couple of months, we're going to have one of the things that's always fun, which we call sometimes a poaching period or the opt-out period where mm. people join. That opt-out <laughs> period always makes for a lot of shifts in, in divisions all over the UBA, whether yes, it be and, North. And, uh, South, east, west, could be anywhere. And you By can the go way, anywhere. I hear that we're going to be going to Texas mm. in a couple of weeks. That'll yeah. be fun to do a match down there. Yeah, this game hey, Texas like. Gates, yeah, yep. All right, pins are back up. Let's see how long it'll take for Nick Avon to wreck the pins again, and we doing another 180. Uh, is that a Winnie the Pooh sighting right there? Winnie the Pooh with a strike. Oh yeah. 
That shot was sweet like honey right there. And he bounced on it like Tigger. Does that mean that he's going to move like Tigger? <laughs> he's going to keep bouncing. Tiggers love bouncing. Right now, Nick Gavin is definitely bouncy. Nick, that was Winnie the Pooh, correct? We, we have a Winnie the Pooh bowling ball sighting. And we have another 10 pin sighting for Picone. Yeah, notice with that ball uh, inside of target, went down the lane within the oil, slight deflection, almost leaving uh, a UBA OG in the form of Josh Malik. Yeah, now they're doing a tag here. I'm not necessarily sure. They didn't, they're not going to win the game. So I'm not really sure what the point of that is. And I'm real. Oh, he made the spare. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the point of that is. Mr. Picone's got to start game two. If he's not getting a carry, this may be the time to get the spare. Yeah, fine, they didn't win the game. They may as well not make the tag and give him another free shot at looking at something and doing a ball change. Indeed. So I don't think I like, I don't, I not, I think, I know I don't like this strategy at all. Mm -hmm. Just lost the game by 40, and oh, by the Six way, you're going up and you're bowling back three frames Six. against somebody who she just shot two frames and they were both strikes. But what do I know? At the end of game one, Arsenal 267, powerhouse 226. Arsenal is up one games to zero. And as we just made the aforementioned, mention, Audrey Snow will start for the Arsenal. And Rob Picone will start for a powerhouse. Yep, game one goes to the Arsenal and right, they threw Arsenal of strikes. And right now, like I said, in the statement game, made a clear statement that they want it. They want to take it home. They want to have it with some, some blankets and cocoa. Audrey is now starting off. Last time she was here, she threw a strike, and there's another one. Yeah, Audrey has not missed. I don't think Audrey has not thrown anything less than 10 on the first ball. <coughs> Audrey has done nothing but thrown strikes so far. She's three for three. Three shots, three and strikes. Nine, which, is one of the, which is one of the reasons why we're going relatively quickly here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Fast and furious, like I said before. Ooh. And this is one of the reasons why I did say they probably would have been better off for that other free shot, because that free shot could have been very costly. Very, very costly. And early hiccup. Hopefully uh, they get the hiccups out their system now because they're going to have to eat and eat more and eat, well, eat well. Well, Arsenal already has taken the lead at the beginning of game two in the first frame. McGowan's got a shot here. Maybe make the spare. No. And that's our first open out of two games. First open out of two games for either team. Could that be a telling sign? Uh, yeah, it, it is. Which is unfortunate because the team that threw that open is a team that cannot afford to do one because they're already down one zip. Mm -hmm. but for those of who that just joined us, because we did finish out game one very quickly, we just started game two, and oh boy. Mm, may need to get out that ball. Ar Arsenal won the first game 267 to 226. The one good thing for Powerhouse at this point is that Picone only has to be in there for one more frame until Bob Geyer tags him in. However, by that point, they could be down by, down by around, oh, 60 something or other pins. Yeah. You know, you don't want to say it's getting late early in the second frame, but it's getting late early. And if Audrey Snell finds on lane six what she found on lane five, oi, you're, you're looking at a 43-pin lead in the second frame. There's Kirby. That ball looks good to me. It is two in a row. And again, Audrey Snell has thrown nothing but strikes so far. Nothing but. I, I wonder if Nick Gavron may have made a mistake in, in him going first because maybe he should have let Audrey go first mm. in games one, three, five, and seven. Right, right now she's a better bowler at this point. She's got the Boynes. She's got the Boynes. <laughs> you know, I'm saying games five and game seven right now. We may not get to a game five. And I'm saying that at the beginning of game two oh. and the seven pin does not go down. And, and, and exactly. I'm sorry? look what you did. Look I didn't what jinx you did. anybody. I don't throw the bowling ball. Nick says, look what you did. You jinx. Am I a jinx, Sean Dyke? You know what? You are, you are a cloud of a certain hue. I am a cloud of a certain hue. <laughs> is, is that the type of hue that, like, little yellow and white flashes of light come out of, and there's, like, a sort of thundering noise? Is that what we're talking about? Well, you know what? Either way, you got to weather the storm, don't you? <laughs> well, she does. The worst that Arsenal can be up right now is 12 pins. At this point, so Arsenal will be up going into the fourth frame. 
Rich is up right now. Any sort of mark would be better than what he said in the first few frames. There's a strike. Interesting. Staying in that piece. Well, now we go to the fourth frame. Are we seeing a tag? Yes, we are. Yeah, could it be a hot tag? Let's see what very, happens. Very quick hot tag over to Rob Geyer. So first tag comes out for Powerhouse. They have three more to go. Uh, in a hole early, but certainly not over. Anything can happen. But based on how Nick and Audrey are throwing, I don't think they plan on blinking anytime soon. Well, if Geyer strikes here, Powerhouse's deficit's only 22. Mm. But it will be 32 because he doesn't strike. 2-8. Uh, let's see what Rob's Interesting adjustments going to be. It looks like Audrey's going to be bowling that fourth frame. And there's no reason why not to because she was buried on lane six. Bury the shot. Guy's looking to make the spare, and he will. Mm, that was a little close. A little close. Pin still went down. Powerhouse with a 37 in the third. Arsenal with a strike love of 69 in the third. 78, 79 to the front desk. 78, 79. Nick's keeping Audrey in there. Audrey definitely had a line on lane six. She definitely had a nice look. Here's a shot over here. Fourth frame still has a nice look. A little bit high. Scrolls out at the end. Out of trouble. 610. Yeah, a little high on the head there. Pause. I mean, hey, Saturday night. She did not like that shot out of her hand. It got out of it a little early. Uh, projected it inside rather than out, and rather than up. Very up, very um, provisional up the lanes bowling. Yeah, very makeable spare. And ooh. Oh, if there was a seven, it would have been gone. Yeah, that's true. Good job, Joe. Did a good job there. Mm -hmm. Makes a spare. Arsenal up by 30. Both teams on spares as we go into the fifth frame. Nick Gavin is tagged in. That is Arsenal's. First tag, they have three more to go. Powerhouse has three. Yeah. Even though I don't think right now we're gonna be seeing Mr. Bacon very much in this game, at least until they get a line in. Let's see if the Winter Soldier can keep marching forward. Little light hit, fourth pin stays. Defiant four pin, four pin, not four count. That is true. Again, not really much of an issue for Arsenal. Because even with spares, as long as they stay clean, they're going to force Powerhouse to carry. And as of right now, we haven't seen it that much of that. Gavin makes a spare. Yeah, spare haven't seen converted. that much of it in this game, I should say. We saw plenty of it in game one. The problem is that they stopped striking in the middle of that game, and Arsenal did not. Yeah, they did not stop. Uh, they ignored the speed limit, and they kept on pressing forward, foot all the way down on the gap. 267 miles an hour. You know it. Guy right now looking for a strike. That ball looks a little bit light. Hmm. Boy. Surface change or angle change? Which one? Angle change. Agreed. You got the calm piece. It's reacting just fine. Now you have to make the adjustment with your feet or your shoulders. See what it is. Well, he was. I was going to say he was down and in. No, he's not. He was a little bit outside. He may have to adjust to down and in. And he may have to adjust to hold the ball holds. It does. Hmm. Down and in, down and in, down and, well, let's see, now there's a tag. I hear an all day from Audrey Snell. AFD. Tag going all into Picon as we, start, as we start the sixth frame. Second half of game two, Arsenal holding on to a 31 pin lead. Here's Picone right now looking to get some sort of strike on the board. There's the first one for Picone. Yeah, great adjustment there. Got his feet slightly left. Projected it a little right. He sees he has the reaction he likes, and now basically he has to stay stay with it. You got to stick with it. Hopefully you get a chance to to shock shock the system a little bit, especially in game two. Gavin staying in in the sixth frame. There's a shot there. That ball looks a little high. No. No problem. You know what? Yeah. Speed takes care of mistakes, doesn't mm. it? I mean, well, you can say you can say lucky, you can say good. All I know is that it was 10 down. I've been, yeah, I, that, that I, ball I, looked a little bit scary to me, but that but that ball didn't hook in high in the beak. That ball stayed there. As a result, as a result of that, stayed in the pocket. Last ball, Still 31 pin lead by Arsenal as it goes to seventh frame. Sort of a big shot here. If Gavin throws another strike, 
That puts a lot of pressure on Powerhouse because they're running out of frames. And just like forecasted, another strike. Mm -hmm. Moving right, going faster, going yep. harder, and yep. down yep. and. Strike. Yep. Down and Gauntlet in. Gauntlet back to Powerhouse. And you almost have to think here with the fact that there's only four frames left. A strike here almost has to be the issue of the day at this point. It's got to be. Cohen, take a shot, looking for a double. That's way out there. Mm -hmm. Got a bucket instead of a double. Yeah, moved in, moved in, missed in, and it skated far. Arsenal, if they go out the door, 256. The best that powerhouse could have done before that shot is a 225. Mm. Now it's only going to be a, two, a 205, and that's assuming he makes a spare. Spare me. Well. Kicks the bucket. He picks the bucket. However, there's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. Love double result. Resultado de los love doubles. First of all, I want to say we collected enough money to do three prices. So depending on how much we collect, that's how many prices. Well, we have an intermission here over the dotting of the microphone. Quiero decir que colectamos suficiente dinero para hacer tres premios. De acuerdo a lo que colecte, es la cantidad de premios que va a haber. Se colectó 380. I will say this, maybe Edwards prefers the distraction over the microphone because Richard threw a strike there. Hey, what's going on, Nick? Whoever's behind the desk, I hate them. I hate them. Nick, I, I think the problem that I have with you is you're too reserved. You need to come out of your show a little bit. There's three in a row from Roger Snell. I wish I heard any of that. <laughs> well, you know what? Hear this. You know, I'll get a chance to take a picture with AJ Styles before the Royal Rumble. How you doing, AJ? <laughs> so that, that's ta that was tag number two. And here comes Nick Gavin for eight, tag number three. And, and yeah, that microphone is a little bit, shall we say, loud. And I will say this because I'm behind the microphone on Tuesday, so you don't have to be that loud. 256 plus 28, 284 for 55 points. And that shot was very loud and proud by Nick Gavron. Yeah, I'm not sure about Eddie Spaghetti, but uh, Nick Cusolosi over there is doing pretty good. Indeed, indeed. Well, speaking of points, there was 267 points in game one for Arsenal. It could be around the 250 points in game two. Guy right now, and it really doesn't matter what Powerhouse does at this point. Because Arsenal no longer needs a strike. If anything, they need four pins in the first frame. My guess is they will get that, and they will get that earlier. I mean, early, they'll get that easy and early. And again, I don't really understand why Guy is still there. Guy has got a lot. He's figured it out. Yes. Let's get the ball over to the person that's only had one strike the whole time. Entire man so far, and it's had more opens than marks, and that's for Cohen. Yeah, more opens than marks, and we're gonna see if we're gonna get a, a quality finish for for guys. Alexis didn't shoot 227. I'll be uh, back. That's a, that's a that's a quality finish for everything except a poor microphone. That that was not a was not a quality finish for the mic. I'll say that. Pause, I guess. <laughs> number 80 and 81 to the front desk. Take number 80 and 81 to the front desk. All right. Well, for those who just saw Rob Guy's last shot, you saw a little surface change to something a little more dull to get through the, to that head oil, if you will. And, 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 right and now that's searching. one of the reasons why he needed a Mr. Picona to in there and throw a couple of shots. Because he still hasn't found anything. I mean, the one, good, the one good part is the next game in game three, he doesn't have to do much. Yeah. You know, I only has to shoot two frames. That being said, and Picone's gonna go. The kick is up, and it's good. Area it. Made the field goal. However, from a Super Bowl tournament standpoint, that's not the field goal you want. Mm -hmm. And right now, you have to um, think about strategy. 
And for those other tag teams who may be watching this and maybe potentially have a match, you also want to think about who you want as your closer, and, and depending on if it gets to a certain amount of games, who you want to match up with in terms of hitting power. Um, Uncap, everybody's a hitter in their own right. That is true. Fourth and final tag going on to Audrey Snell. That is the only thing that could have stopped them is inappropriate tagging. Uh-huh. And like you said, you have seen that before. I have seen inappropriate tagging. However, this is appropriate tagging. And Audrey's ball, once again, another strike. Audrey, I believe, has only made one non-strike the whole entire time. Yeah. And if another one happens here, it'll basically... It'll, it'll definitely be the same 255 points we heard over the rather boisterous um, individual on the microphone. Audrey up. And nope, it'll be 256, 256, 187. And it was a 187 for the powerhouse in games one and two. But definitely going to have to breathe some life into themselves give themselves their own little uh, powerhouse pep talk, get back in this. And early in, Fast and Furious, uh, two games to zero is the Arsenal, T.A. Yeah. And this result was uh, just like the first one, very decisive and very in the Arsenal's favor. Yeah, heavy hitters throwing heavy shots. Yeah, and that's what's been going on. So right now, Powerhouse is looking to sort of regroup. Rob Geyer will start game three. Yeah. Gavron Just and like Snell. Nick Gavron will start for Arsenal. Yeah. Gavron and Snell looking for another uncapped title to add to their resume, extensive resume. Geyer setting up first. A little change, definitely a change in the ball. Yes, he did. A little bit of the change in terms of the speed. He really yeah, threw it outside. Threw it outside. Um, duller surface, stronger early reaction. Mm -hmm. Look, also early reaction, early flip equals early stop, especially when you go to a surface uh, much like that one. So you have to move inside so that way you don't have a hiccup on the outside. Very true. Let's see how Gavin responds. Nick Gavin has had a line so far, first two games. That continues. Another strike over here on lane six. Yeah, Gavron and Snell, very tough team to compete. Uh, have competed against them before. It, it was definitely knocked down, drag out. Got a chance to see uh, the talent that is within this division. And to those who may be surprised when I say this, he used to throw it a lot faster. Yeah, well, let's see if he breaks the gate on lane five again. He's only done that twice so far. 17 miles an hour is slow for Nick Garron, yes. It is. I've seen him full 22, 23 miles an hour. Hi, hit. Looks Oop. good. A little shoulder Alvin's shrug down. Yeah, and there, there's that 20 miles an hour thing that we we're talking about. And that's still, I've seen him throw faster than that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely making those pins clash. So. Thrashing them up. Now, again, if you're Rob, if you're Rob Guy and if you're Powerhouse, the strategy right now has to be hold on and do everything that you can and hope that the transition is enough that they start placking corner pins. And right now, they're not doing that. Here's Geyer. Mm. And Geyer has placked both corner pins on the same ball, which traditionally is really bad. Yes, I've seen a lot of uh, mixes of reactions all day between left and right lane. Yeah, well, I, I believe it doesn't take a genius to say if you leave both the 7 and the 10 pin on the same ball, you're going to have an issue trying to make the spare. Guy right now is going to throw really hard trying to make the spare. Oh! oh, look at that. And we have, well, an amazing, an amazing example. That guy example. was so disgusted. He didn't even turn around to look. Yeah, hop in his skip, and then all of a sudden, with the, oh, and then he turned around. Hell of a conversion. Hell of a conversion. Now, now, can your Winnie the Pooh ball do that, Nick? That is the question. And Nick goes, no, I'd rather throw strikes and have to make and convert spares, which is a very good point. But hey, ray of light in that one right there. Well, ray, ray of light only works if he doesn't do the same thing over on lane five, because right now with Arsenal, they need strikes, not spares. There's a strike. Shoot, Bowling Gobs gave you a gift. You better, you better be thankful and take advantage. Got to take advantage of it. 
powerhouse is now still near three frames. If Nick gets a strike here, let's see what he does. First of all, he's got to get a strike here. He's got to get a strike. Definitely to keep it in their favor if he does not strike. And it all depends on the count. It's got to be shot. better. That ball looks good. It is. All right. Nick Gavin, three in a row now. Nick Evans given the struggle of, no, you're not going anywhere. I've got it. So that looks like Audrey is staying put. What? Audrey goes, why would I want to tag now? Which is a good point. There are reasons on why you'd want to do that, but there's just as many reasons on why you would not want to do that. Yep. The oh. main one being, hey, Nick's got three in a row. Uh -huh. Keep riding the pony until his leg falls off. <laughs> Here comes the pony. Pony still striking. Four in a row for Gavron. Very good. Arsenal right now up by at least 20. Yes. And it'll be more if Picone doesn't start throwing strikes. And Picone is coming in very early in this matchup, the earliest that he can be. And if you look at it this way, that's probably... I don't agree with that. Uh, I don't have an issue with it. Geyer left a split in the second frame on that same lane. Ooh, merciful. And Picone got all the pins down. Body language says a lot. Looks uh, good to me. I mean, he's, he's not really thrilled about what he did, but... Now, what can you read that in the in the back? What, what does the back of his jersey say? Looks like McLovin, but I don't think that's what it is. Well, uh, well hopefully McLovin, <laughs> McLovin, McLovin was definitely loving the carry there. It, even though it looks super bad off the hand. Well, that may be the first ball that he's thrown so far that he's McLovin the carry. What is the name? Is it McLovin? It is, it is McLovin. There you go. Gets the ball, pushes a little more. Ah, now he's McLovin it. Oh. Da, da, da. No, no, I'm not, da, getting, da, uh, uh. I'm not getting paid rights for that, for that musical nah, jingle, so yep. we're not doing it. Mm -mm. Yeah, look at you being a Big Mac. No, I want to I wanna be paid royalties before I do that. All special sauce on that last one. I am not, repeat, not using puns for an organization that did not pay me to use puns. What are, I don't know what you're speaking of. I mean, come on. I mean, I could drop a little nugget here and there. You're making me grimace right now. <laughs> Nick Gavin wants none of the punnery, but he's going to take oh. a four and an oh, oh, nope. Paradise he's going to take shift. four and an eight and like it. That's what he's going to do. Ooh, potential 300 max turned to potential 278 max. Powerhouse is now taking the lead, albeit by two pins. Mm -hmm. But they do have the lead. And, and now Audrey's gotten up from her table, so it looks like she's going to bolt the sixth frame. That'll be tag number one. And that shows you how big that, that merciful uh, conversion of the 6 7 10 was. Well, it, absolutely. It's big because it gives them the lead, but it also is a testament to how quickly both bowlers are throwing the ball. We've got to be less than a half hour in, and we're in the middle of game three. Here's Audrey, and she makes a strike. Yep. Listen. Arsenal back in the striking train. If you've just joined us, thinking, yeah, maybe I'm going to have a biscuit, get a coffee, take a shower, come on in. Maybe we'll be in game two. No, you're in game three, the mm -hmm. middle of it. Arsenal is up to zip. Powerhouse right now has just taken the lead in the third frame, in the uh, third game, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, can they hold on to it? That is the question. Yep. Guys, there's a strike here, he will. Let's see if he's standing on business. Oh, that's high. Oh. Yep, four pin. He didn't like that shot, and neither did I think anybody else except Audrey and Nick. I'm sure they love that shot. Well, uh, he didn't love the fact that it wasn't 10, but he will take nine. Well, he's a man of many emotions. One of those emotions right now will be sadness. Cause he left a four pin. Here comes the ball, and good spare. You're getting four different bowlers, four different styles. Four different bowls, four different styles. Arsenal is back up by nine pins as we go into the seventh frame. Now, obviously, since they're on a strike and Powerhouse is on a spare, they have the option to increase the lead. But let's see what Pacon does here. See what McLovin does. Yes. Sir. Double eighteen. Double eighteen. That'll be tag number three. Here's McLovin. There's the pins. McLovin it. I have a feeling that we're going to be seeing a lot of him going down the stretch. So let's see what happens here as um, Nick goes in, and I believe that is tag number. That is tag uh, number two. Tag number two right there for Nick and Audrey. 
came in a little light before. Let's see if he can correct it. And we have the OG. Oh, that, that's definitely not a good correction on Nick Aaron's part. That is the A-10. That's usually something that if we take a picture of, it'll be on social media. The nice thing about this is that we can always screen frame and, this and put it on social and media Nick later. And can make it. Oh. I was going to say, Geyer, I like to point out Geyer made the spare and he threw the ball faster than you did. Geyer would have made that spare and he threw the ball faster than you did. He only needed to happen one time. Andre says, yeah, that happened one time. Well, okay, fine. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh would not be happy with your spare shooting right there. Audrey, that ball looks good. It is. Audrey Snell comes back in. That is tag number three. So both teams are at three tags. The next, the next time that Geyer or Gavin tag in, they're, they're going to be bowling for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. And McLovin up, and as I said before, I have a feeling that you're going to see McLovin up through the 10th frame. Pacone up. There he goes. Pacone up, Pacone light. Ooh, oh, oh, almost got away with it. Two pin. Much better than an 8 10. <laughs> well, Powerhouse with the spare will take a slight lead, but the advantage will go to Arsenal because they're up. Strike over spare in the eighth. Yeah, the, the, def the deflection of the last shot definitely put this match in a different direction. Absolutely. Arsenal can go off for 246. Of course, he's going to make this. Well, not of course, but he will. Powerhouse can go off for a 239. So seven pin game as we go into the ninth frame. Again, Arsenal has the advantage. It does not matter what Powerhouse does. Arsenal can strike out, take game three. Obviously, Powerhouse can force them to throw a bunch of strikes. Hmm. Strike over here in the ninth frame is pretty much tantamount at this point. Yeah, what a difference a frame makes and what a difference at times a certain Absolutely lane can make. big shot make. here at Barry Sip. Powerhouse, if they threw the strike in the eighth, would be in control of their own destiny in this game. As of right now, they are not. Nick Gavin, and there is the fourth and final tag for Arsenal. So Gavin's now win the rest of the way. Nick Gavin can control whether or not Arsenal will go up 3-0. First ball, ninth frame, ball looks a little light. Yeah, uh, four pin. So we're starting to see a little difference between a lane six and lane five. That's well, you saw that before, and Pecone threw the same shot with almost the same result. So they're playing each other's line. Uh-oh. No, he made it. Too, too fast to worry about that. Now it is Powerhouse with the advantage. They're up by three and up strike to spare going into the 10th frame. So if Nick Gavin goes out the door, Powerhouse's first shot's got to be a strike. Indeed it does. Uh, they have to throw three to make them think about it and make them earn it. First shot here from Gavin. That ball looks much buried and much better. Much buried. I'm not sure if that's a thing. Much more buried. That's a thing. Much more very, very. Much, much buried, much more buried. Mm -hmm. 226, like you said, out for uh, for Arsenal. Yep. And again, if that's the case, Powerhouse must throw the first strike. The, the mark right there means Powerhouse has got a mark. Second shot here. This question is what they need to do, and what they're saying is, Powerhouse, you got to throw the first ball in the 10th. Mm-hmm. You don't want to give any gifts. No gifts. I'm assuming, of course, that Nick Avern throws a five. They have thrown nothing less than eight on the first spot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Even though I did call it earlier, 2.30 at the beginning of the game, I said 30 was a loser. Yeah, in the middle, when it was going to be somewhere in the 2.30 range. Uh, Gavin's going to finish out the strike. Arsenal, 2.26. All right, all right, Shonda, face on. Call what Powerhouse is going to shoot. Call that number. I called 237. Oh, 237. All right, I am not going to call a score. I remain the force of Switzerland being neutral to everybody. But what I will say is that this is for game three for Powerhouse to get on the board. No, seven pin, game over, Arsenal wins. And your 236 prediction, uh, mm -mm -mm. Wah, wah. wow.
And, and it just really like that. Now they can tag or not tag or whatever. Mathematically, the game is over. And that's Arsenal why they say. Directly tagged, and Arsenal is going to be up three zip. That's indeed why they say it. Yeah, well, the difference between this game and the other two games, the first few games, Arsenal just ran over Powerhouse. This one, Powerhouse had a shot to get, and they did not do it. It's very important. You always close it out because you just never know. And they closed out the frame. They closed out the 10th. They put, they put 10 back, three times back to back. And right there it is exactly a tug of war at its best. This is a really nice game, but it's a game that I have a feeling guys are going to wish they had back. And there's a strike that they needed at the end of game three. Arsenal 226, Powerhouse 219. Arsenal is up 3 0. Mm -hmm. Nil is an ill fated situation. So, what, are we, what do you think? Potential well, here, walk down? No? Well, let's, let's start it with this. There's four games left. Powerhouse needs all four of them. The margin of error is z zero, a.k.a. El Chipo. All right, so Nick, tell us about the Josh Malik on, on the right lane. The Josh Malik? Oh. As I said, the ball is like 40-something years old. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> old balls leave OGs. No core. Bad shot. Throw way too hard. The flex. Oops. Oops, you, hopes, oops, hopefully you won't do it again. If it happens, it happens. Hey. I'm sure I can I don't care. If he dies, he dies. Huh? He dies, he dies. Exactly. And the ball died. But, so, any adjustment on there since you got a little deflection on that right lane? Don't throw a terrible shot. There you go. Throw it better? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. And uh, Audrey right, so. right there starting with a spare. Audrey starting with a spare. Now, Pecan is starting... For powerhouse, both bowlers have got to throw the first three strikes. And Pecone right now is hoping to not do what he did in the tenth frame, and this is putting the seventh in again. Well, consistency right there, not That's in the not way the he likes. That's not consistency you want, sir. No. And right there, um, that has got to be a little bit frustrating right there. You threw the ball well, twice. I mean, you didn't get all the way through the pocket, but you played it safe. You didn't leave a split. But you didn't get the hit. Play play safe against Arsenal right now. You're down zero to three. You have to take take play safe and throw it out the window. Mm -hmm. Both bowlers with spares as we go into the second frame. Again, this is a game powerhouse must win. And I'm going to be saying this three more times mm. for the other games: five, game six, and game seven. Should Say we it. get there? Mm, Got to get there. Now, what time is it? Just out of curiosity, because again, this is very fast. Trying to set records out here, trying to beat the first match. Well, we're only six fifty-six. Uh, definitely did. We're not even at the forty-minute mark in this match. I don't think. It's Picon right now, looking for the strike. Ooh, that looks. I don't. I don't want to say good, but it looks good in the score sheet. There you go, a little high flush, flush of royal pro Lie. proportions there. Audrey Snow up, second frame. <laughs> What do you say when you greet somebody? Hi. Yeah, hi bye. See what she does over here, second frame. Mm. Corner pin, ten pin. Almost repetition of deflection there. And yeah, that ball did not look bad. Yeah, but we're starting to see that reaction shift and change on lane six. A little more deflection there, a little less more of a cut. Uh, a lot less of a cut, in my opinion, especially mid lane there. I just looking to make a spare, and she will. All over it. And one thing when you get to this level, I mean, you know, everybody has splits. Once in a while, you've got to make the spares. You, you must make the makeable spares. You got to close frames to have a shot. Uh, a lot of close frames in the last one. It was all about, well, it basically was all about who was going to make the first mistake. No mistakes really were made with the exception of that 8-10. And that almost was the albatross. The Hindenburg. Well, even though they're making mistakes, they sure are striking a lot. And mm -hmm. striking a lot and carrying uh, definitely, and I mean definitely, cures a lot of ills. Mm -hmm. And that right there was ill-fated carry or non-carry, should I say, for Audrey Snell on that shot in her third frame. Right now, if you're the Arsenal, you got to think, okay, fine, I'm not carrying now. It's time for me to figure out the transition as she makes this fair. Powerhouse really hasn't shown that they're going to carry more than two, three in a row. So they do have a little bit of time. And right now, they're only down a little bit. And even if he throws a double here, they're only down a little bit. And keep in mind, Audrey can tag Nick in, in the fourth frame. 
where Nick has, with the exception of that E10, Nick has been throwing bombs. McCohen right now looking for that adjustment. Well, two in a row. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's not thrilled about how he's doing it, but the fact of the matter is he's doing it. Yeah, uh, he took a little chance there trying to avoid leaving anything, and he almost <laughs> left a lot. I would honestly just uh, stay the course and focus on controlling that pocket. You don't want to chase strikes unless the pressure's being put on your neck. But in, on the other hand, you definitely want to get ahead and um, send a message. Yeah, I'm not sure if I enjoy this strategy here. He's staying in. Keep in mind, he got sloppy over in lane five last time. Did he make the correct adjustment? Yes, he did. Well, that looks good. I will correct myself that I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. Picone says, don't pick on me. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. I Thank see you, what you did there. Yep. Now, the question is, will Nick see what you did there? This is the first time that Arsenal is down by any significant amount of pins. Mm-hmm. Going to the fourth frame, they may need a very quick tag. Gavin is in. Fourth frame, and Gavin's got some work to do. There's a good start to doing it. Oh, kicking up the 10 there, getting a little more angle in there. Uh, he said he needs to, quote, unquote, throw it better and not throw it bad. That's good. Fifth frame coming up. Being that the ball hit like a pancake, he chose to throw it better and not throw it better. Better efforts. Better up. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a swing at it and see what happens here in frame five, lane five. Gavin's here looking for two in a row. That ball's got to hurry. It does not temp him. Yeah, that, that, that did not look good the second that he released it, and he knows it. We do have a Winnie the Pooh ball sighting. I think he's knocking this out the back. There's the poo. <laughs> he's knocking it out the back. He may have a pin to take home. I feel like it. Done it very fast. No make it no. No pin bounce out. Winnie the Pooh does his job. However, what Nick needed at that point was all the pins to go down. Powerhouse with a three bagger. Guy are coming in for his first tag. I say keep a cone in. Cone out, Guy are in. Guy are looking to add on the league with another strike here. That looks good. Oh my goodness. And Welcome I, to the club. The A-10 club has now inducted a new member on lanes five and six. Yeah, and I said the, keep it going in. The, the only difference here is that I've seen Rob Geyer make the five, six, seven, make the uh, six, seven, ten. Can he do it here for the A-10? And no. what he does is he makes a field goal. It's good. You don't get three extra points for that, though. And I believe his ball is stuck back there now. Well, all of a sudden, we went from having a chance for a commanding lead to a seven-pin lead for Powerhouse as we go into the second half of game four. Keep in mind, again, Powerhouse needs to win this or it is sayonara, and the Arsenal will advance to, I believe, the number one contenders match mm. in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I definitely feel like Pacone should have stayed in. He had a good rhythm. I say uh, he, they should have employed the 7 8 with you. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that's what they should have done or not. There's a 10-pin. But at least you're right. I don't think Pacone would have would have went the uh, plaque 810. Taking from 84 to the death, taking from 84. They say when Elaine talks, listen to it. Yep. So, oh, I hope it gets there. It will. Oh, definitely going to get there. He definitely got all the way up there. Did get all the way up there. Here comes Audrey in the sixth frame. So far, 810 has claimed victim number one, Nick Gavron, victim number, number two, two, Rob, Rob Geyer. Geyer. Audrey comes in. This is the second tag for Arsenal. They have two more. And Powerhouse has made their two tags as well. Here's Audrey. That ball looks a little high. Yeah, it dropped out of her hand there. But at least it's makeable. It's a 3 6 10. It's not the mess that mm -hmm. Mr. Gavin left. It's makeable yet what? <coughs> Unmakeable. Yes. So indeed. unmakeable. I shouldn't say unmakeable. It's makeable, but not always makeable. Yeah. Spare could be unmakeable. There's, there's, there's two specific spots where you need to put that ball. And it looks and, like right there. And that would be one of them. I agree with the spare. Right now have a exactly a 10-pin game going in the seventh frame. Both teams working on spares. Again, Arsenal is up three zip. They win this one. It is game, set, match. We go home. Or they go home, we got to shut down first and then go home. 
but at least we have to sit down. Ha -ha. Takedown's good. Ha ha. Gavin right now, seventh frame. Get a ball. It does. Yeah, it kicks the 10 out that time. Now, you know I love game seven. Oh, yeah. So now here's a question for you because this is the third in a long day for you. Mm -hmm. Would you rather go to game seven? It gets exciting, and this is just for you. I can stay here all night. Or would you rather it gets done so that you can go back up to Long Island? Uh, well, sh sh shout out to Brooklyn. Shout out to Lower East Side Manhattan. Shout out to Long Island. So that's shout not out to me. everywhere. And shout out to hopefully this next coming shot. For that shot looks good. Uh, Powerhouse back up by 10 as we go into the eighth frame. Again, very important shot here for Pacone and Powerhouse. A strike mm. not only keeps them in this, they cannot get shut out. Anything that is not a strike, no, and you Arsenal know, can take the lead. Looks like Powerhouse. I don't think they're ready to go home yet. <laughs> I'm not ready to go home. I want more bowling. Uh, we, Anthony may be ready to go home. Anthony, you ready? Yeah, Anthony's ready to go home. But I am not, though. Well, Pacone's now, is not. Pacone ready to Pacone go home. Pacone is not. He's definitely not ready to go home. Two in a row for Powerhouse. Again, it will keep them in control going into the ninth frame. The Arsenal's job, and specifically Nick Gavin's job, because he's coming up there, is to make life as hard as humanly possible. How many How many more tags left for Powerhouse? Uh, Powerhouse has two. Arsenal has two. To the next, number 85. Gavron, eighth frame. Oh, oh, good lord. Yeah, almost left the eight pin up there again, another 10. That is not exactly the pressure that you want to put on them because that's not putting a lot of pressure. Even though we do get to see Winnie the Pooh again, and that's always worth the price of admission. Oh, Pooh. Da 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 da. All right, got it. Oh, got it. Arsenal again. Down, well, now they're down by 20, going into the ninth frame. Mm. So if you're Rob Geyer right now, you know you have to come back in. What do you What do you think his thought process right now might be? Don't leave an 8-10. Mm. That would be the process at this point. Because again, Arsenal is on a mark. Even if they're on a strike, the best they can do is 214. You can go out the door for 244. Well, and there's a strike. Now keep in mind again, that is. Actually, that is now tag number three, getting the caverns in. So that is three for them. Mm -hmm. So they only have one more tag left, and that's when Audrey comes in. I have a feeling it's probably going to be for the last shot. Rob Geyer is coming in. That's tag number three for Powerhouse. <coughs> and they only have one more tag that they need. And he gets Bacon that most of the last shot, even though I have a feeling based on his look. Oh my goodness. Well, that looks good over there. Well, he did not good shot, throw at 8 10. He did not. Rob, Rob Geyer making the best lefty impersonation that we've seen all day. Nah. And what I was saying is that we'll probably see Picone shooting sooner rather than later. And sure enough, that's exactly what's happening. And does that make four tags for Powerhouse? So, any mark by Powerhouse, I think I got my math right, any mark by Powerhouse, assuming that it's good count, they win, we see a game five. Obviously, if he strikes, the game's over. So, looking to see a game five. Oh, and it goes down. And still They here. don't have to worry about the seven pin. He makes it. Mm -hmm. Powerhouse will live to see another game. Yes. <clears throat> Again, assuming that we get at least six pins on this shot. And Same that he doesn't it. take a trip to the Church of the Episcopalian variety. Oh, no, or no. go golfing. Yeah, that ball looks good. And there it is buried. It is good. Well, someone on Powerhouse has figured out the lanes to bowling, which is at Picone. However, at Picone's not starting game five. It is Rob Geyer. Now, can Rob Geyer hold the fort long enough for Picone to get back in? I feel he definitely can. I feel he should uh, take a chance. Uh, this goes against the down and in. I say he should take a little more of a move inside, slow his feet down, and just and just let it float, and just let the ball roll. Well, Pacone will finish out, and that is Powerhouse' best game of this set right there. And oh, they boom. needed it badly. Now, theoretically, the game's over. Arsenal does not have to tag. Nick Gavin can take all three shots, try to find a better line, try to find something better in terms of ball reaction. He can do whatever he feels like doing, because again, the game's out. Worst that they can do with an inappropriate tagging is lose the game, which they've already lost. True. And what rhymes with true? Pooh. Let's get another look at Pooh. 
Are we going to see? Oh, there's Pooh. Let's see we if Pooh was shy. Pooh does not make a good strike ball. 6 10. Gavin is going to he's gonna tag for Shiggles. Appropriate tagging. Yay. So they're, they're chatting strategy. Audrey is, I think Audrey is telling Nick, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, nope. Talking about what ball to use. So, so Nick, Inquiry Minds want to know, would you ever use that Winnie the Pooh ball spare? The Winnie to the Pooh, blah, blah, blah. Would you ever, yeah, you pull bad. <laughs> would you ever use that Winnie the Pooh strike ball as a, a spare ball as a strike ball? All the time. All the time. I want a scratch tournament with a T-zone. That's not Winnie the Pooh. The same ball. It's a plastic ball with no core. Still not Winnie the Pooh. I will gladly use it all day. Any okay. plastic right now, actually. Plastic ball. At the ball end colors? of game four, Powerhouse 244, Arsenal 200. Powerhouse is on the board, but Arsenal is up three games to one. So the ball is still very much in Arsenal's favor. Rob Geyer will be starting for Powerhouse game five. Moving forward in the future, uh, plastic ball challenge, Nick Gavin wins it. I would love that. <laughs> the plastic hat. Plastic ball Winnie the Pooh house challenge. Yep. Uh, checking the slide right there, checking to uh, see if any footing issues. Because you can't afford any issues right now. Nope. Or else um, you're going to be going home. At least not zero, but only when one is not necessarily fun. No. Uh, if, if, you, if you lose four to one instead of four to zero, all you're doing is paying extra lineage. That's all you're doing. And you do not want that. You don't want to dine on lineage. Yeah, if you're gonna win four, if you're gonna take the fifth game, you may as well go for six and seven. Mm. And guy starts with Kevin. Yeah, extremely direct right there. And the thing with both Rob Geyer and Nick Gavron style, they are spreading oil fast and quickly. They're burning a line, but they're also pushing a certain wave of oil to an area that can leave them getting plaque tens. Yeah. I, I'm actually surprised that Geyer isn't chatting with Bacon a little bit more. Because Pacon, I think, and I'll find out if I'm right when Pacon's up there, I think he's throwing the ball significantly slower and letting the ball do the work. And Guy definitely is not letting the ball do the work. He's trying to let pure muscle and power do the work. And sometimes that is a good strategy. I'm not sure it's a good strategy right now. Well, strategy is key. And right now, you mentioned the Pooh strategy. And he has broken out uh, Pooh Shiesty. We'll call it that. Pooh Shiesty? Pooh Shiesty. Oh, there's Poo Shiesty. And uh, there's Poo 60. Mm. And there's Poo Sh. Oh, that, that, that was Poo. Yeah, it's absolutely right. When he threw that first ball, it was definitely Poo. Poo did not push. No, that, I would have added a counter yeah, to that, but we are a family friendly show. Sort of, kind of. Gavin's looking to make the spare, he will. So we have two teams with the spare piece going into frame two. I don't know if Gavin was trying to throw the Pooh Shiesty for our benefit over here. And the answer right now is no. The well, answer could change later, but right now it's no. I think he just put it in the wrong spot, personally. Well, we'll find out. Right now, second ball, he's not using the Pooh ball. And he gets a strike. No Pooh, and he followed through. No Pooh, no problem. I know Pooh, no problem. There you go. No poo, and Gavin's going to try to find the honey. Even though technically he already has found his honey. Aww. Oh, I see what you did there. I know you did. For the love of bowling. And let's see if Geyer takes that little move inside and has a little fun with the oil. And well, he does that bit, one. Well, that's a little bit better. It all depends go down. He's also, I think he, yeah, he sure did. He did slow it down. I don't know. Maybe he's listening to me. Hey. But he definitely slowed the ball down, looking for a double here in the third frame. Well, he can't slow down when it comes to striking because oh, they need everything. Well, he definitely can't slow down now for a number of reasons. Mm. One of which is Arsenal and Powerhouse currently tied after the second frame. And again, keep in mind for everybody that just tuned in, Powerhouse is down three to one. This is game five. They need to win this. Okay. Guy like right now one. looking to double. That ball looks good. It that looked is. good out the hand. That looked very good. Stayed up under there. Yeah, he didn't like the shot. I don't know why he didn't like the shot, but that shot looked good to me. But then again, we're commentating. We're not actually throwing the rock in this point. 
Well, a lot of times you know the feel that you want when you're up there. But from up here, even looking at his hand and looking at the rotation on there, he definitely did everything he needed to do for that. I still would Back take a little walk inside. The devil. I don't know why he's playing around with Winnie. Leaves a four pin. Well, my, my theory on that is that he knows he's definitely going to move a little further right there, and he doesn't want to take a chance with the ball that he has in the hand now, move right, and then go through the face. So well, he's going with predictability. He makes a spare, but if he keeps using Winnie, he may turn into Eeyore. Ah. Uh, such a donkey at times. That's not what not. Well, Arsenal right now still only down by around 10 as we go into the fourth frame. But again, you don't want Powerhouse to, and, and yes, Arsenal is more than good enough to come back from a 10 pin lead. Oh, indeed. But you need to throw strikes and, and just get some sort of pressure on Powerhouse because you don't want to start them throwing a free reeling. There's a strike. Mm -hmm. And I may see a little, maybe seeing a little gamesmanship. Now, remember, plastic surface do not <coughs> absorb. They yes. only carry and push down. So maybe I'm um, trying to stop any kind of momentum moving forward. Well, keep in mind, where does guy have to throw the ball now? Lane six, which is where Winnie's been hanging out. Yes, Winnie, so Winnie has been hanging there. So Nick is using Winnie to maybe throw some honey down there and make the lanes a little bit stickier for him. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a sticky situation if he, if he runs situation. into a little carry down that he does not want. Here's Geyer, there's the shot, and ooh, ah, maybe exactly the strategy what we're about. worked. Only Nick Gavin knows for sure what he's doing with Winnie over there on lane six. But we have a feeling because that ball is plastic, that oil may be slowly shifting down there. But well, six is funky, and Nick's trying to make it not just funkier, but like Casey and the Sunshine Band funky. Strategy. Uh-oh. No, he got it. What? Kristen line one, Kristen line one. So Nick has said he wants to make lane six as miserable for everybody as humanly possible. I've done that strategy before, and I've called it the scorched oil strategy, meaning that if I can't find a shot, no one else will either. Well, he's, ma he's making a sticky situation. Now he's going to get stuck in it. Hopefully he's not stuck in his head. Well, what he's, what he's basically saying is he wants to make this a spare game versus powerhouse. Mm -hmm. Fast, right? They're saying, well, no, he can still strike over in lane five. Yeah, and um, it actually favors Pacone. It'll hurt Geyer, but um, that strategy, in my opinion, based on style and, and um, ball roll, will help Pacone out, as well as, as well as Audrey. As I was going to say, it also helps Audrey out. First tag here for both bowlers, Audrey in the fifth frame, and gets all the pins down. It looks like she tripped out I, of 5 7 10 there. there. There's a trip 5 7 10. I have a feeling we're going to see tag number two very quickly, and yes, we are. Gavin comes in immediately, and you're starting to see the game plan here by Arsenal with a double, and they take the lead by one. If they can throw another strike here in the sixth frame, that's gonna force Powerhouse to throw a shot on the sixth frame that Winnie's already been, shall we say, um, pooing on, so to speak. Let's uh, see if we go Gavin down and in. Gavin looked for three in a row. Oh, he sure did, and all the pins went down. Big shot from Arsenal. See some strategy right now. Let's see if it pays off. Pacone is going back up there. Yeah, potential 270 max right now for for TA, the Arsenal. Arsenal 270. Yeah, 270. Yep, 269 for Powerhouse, one yep. pin game. But now let's see if the strategy worked. Nick has already said that they're trying to make that lane not carryable for Powerhouse. Didn't work yet. There's another carry, 2-0 oh. for Powerhouse. Still a one pin game as we go into the seventh frame. Again, Powerhouse must win this game or yeah. it's over. Arsenal takes the match. Yeah, yeah, but I do. I, I see. I see what's being created, and even though he got the carry, you saw that ball labor. It took a while to get there. Yeah, he, he got the carry, but the question is, how long can they hold on to it? Well, carry versus carry down. They're going right up, looking to build. Ooh, oh no, four seven. Now, that may not have been the lane that Arsenal was hoping that they screwed up on, but they did screw up on the lane, so potentially damage done. Arsenal doesn't have the lead yet. They have the potential to take it with another strike in the seventh frame. Yeah, indeed. As you see right there, that's what happens when you have to throw it differently on each lane. Yep. It's all about finding a way to mentally keep your rhythm. 
And you know this as well as I do. There's only a certain number of bowlers that will like this, so that don't mind using different shots in each lane. I'm one of them. I'm fine with that, but not everybody else is. Audrey right now, frame seven. She hits this one. Arsenal takes the lead, uh -oh. looking for four in a row. No. I saw what I saw. Ooh, almost. I saw what I saw. Yeah, almost got away with the two five up there. Mm -hmm. a little, little, little skate action, skating in that oil. Yeah, uh, now it's Arsenal that can take a one pin lead, should we see a spare from Audrey Snell. Yeah, that ball took a little skate. Right there you see a figure eight due to the yep. skating of that of that ball. Little, little thin ice, but the ice is not cracked yet. Yeah, let's see. She may not be Tanya, but she needs to go in and go hard. Harding right She'll there. She'll make the spare, she will. Arsenal up by one. Both teams on spares going to the eighth frame. Again, same situation. Arsenal, if they win this, it's over. Powerhouse has got to win this game to force a game six. Have to. Must win situation. Win or go well, somewhere other than here. Or they can stay here but get off the lanes. Maybe uh. they can even stay on the lanes, just not this game. Now that is tag four, and that is oh. the final tag for Arsenal this game. Gavin leads a bucket. Mm. Got very fast on there. A lot of push, no finish. No finish with the fingers. Yep, Gavin's in the rest of the game for Arsenal. And makeable yet missable. Let's see what happens here. Very good spare indeed. And right now, as you see the, as we see the puzzle pieces on the jersey of Rob Geyer, let's see if he can put the puzzle together and get this win to give them two wins and enforce a game six. I believe this is tag number two. Let me just check. This is tag number two for Geyer. That ball looks good. It is now. That's a nice shot, but they do have to tag Mr. Pacone right back in because that's only tag number two, and now this is tag number three. Last call for ticket 89 to the front desk. Last call for ticket 89. Ticket 90 to the front desk. Ticket 90. Pacone up. Pacone, ninth frame, a double here will give Powerhouse the lead. And they have it. Powerhouse will have the lead going in the 10th frame. Powerhouse can go up for a 247. Hmm. Arsenal, 234. You're a champion with a 3-0 lead. Uh, you lost game, game four. Might lose game five. What are you thinking? All right, right now, again, I've got to make, try to make life as miserable as humanly possible for Powerhouse. Keep in mind, Powerhouse has got to finish on the lane that Winnie the Pooh was hanging out on, and I'm sure that was part of the strategy here. Yeah, However, indeed. that strategy only works as if you put pressure on them to do anything, and that shot over there means maybe not. Well, there's Winnie again. Make the spare, going to 10th frame. Potential 222 finish. It is. 222 finish means obviously Powerhouse has got to show up. They got to show up, and they have to show out. And they, and they, well, well, if they, if safety, they go, go out, the, out. <laughs> well, obviously, first strike, first strike wins. They can, if my math is correct here. Yeah, it's 25. They can win with a mark, yeah. or 35, I should say. They can win with the mark. They've got to get really good count. Yeah, you know, um, and you know, even though they wouldn't have to necessarily go out, they would have to mark. But you want to go out, especially for your own psyche, to show well, that you can't do it if need. Well, it's not just a mark. It's mark. It's it's mark with good count. Mm. Great Because point. you're looking at 35, eight. So for argument's sake, eight spare eight, they lose. Because on the double. And now, now they obviously now a strike ends it, and we go to a game six. Mm -hmm. And open ends it in the other direction, mm -hmm. and Arsenal wins. Yeah. There is a potential 237 match now, now for the question, Powerhouse. Now the other question becomes who's selling that shot for Powerhouse because they've not made their fourth tag yet. Who would you put up? Would you put up Geyer who just threw a strike there or Pacone who's been the more consistent? I would put Pacone. I would too. Apparently Geyer's going up. So that's their fourth and final tag. So Geyer is in. Whether or not they see game six or not will depend on Rob Geyer. Yep. It's in your hands. Hold it. Do not drop it. Yep. Ticket 91 to the front desk. Ticket 91. 
This is to force a game six. And he hey. does big strike from Geyer. We're going to see a game six here. Big man strike. Well, we are assuming, of course, that Geyer will get at least three pins on this shot. Safe to, safe to say. Hell, we may see gutter another 236. The gutter monster is lurking. The gutter monster is always lurking in uh, the deepest, darkest recesses of the bowler's soul. Well, you know what else I see in my soul? I see another 236. 91 and 92. See another 236. That means that would be nice spare. Actually, no, you can't. Yeah, you could. Except you won't. There's another strike. The gutter monster has foiled you, Sean Knight face on. Ha, 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 ha. Well, that was a monster of a hit right there. That was a monster of a hit. And wait a minute. Um, who has to throw the last shot? He still does. Okay. Does have to throw the last shot. Well, he was the fourth and final tag. Yes. So, yeah, they don't have to switch. He, okay. He's got to throw it. And unless the brains magically fall out of his head right now momentarily, he will throw the last shot. And that looks good, and it's crap, but at least do that now. At the end of game five, powerhouse 244, Arsenal 222. It's now 3-2 Arsenal. And Nick may be on the phone trying to say, hold up Last on those dinner reservations. We're going to be delayed Last a little bit. And Anthony, the cameraman, who's been here all day, is probably a little bit grumpy because now all of a sudden he's got another game. He's smiling at me. We know that he's crying inside like the sad, sad tears of a clown. Thank you, Smokey Robinson. Ha ha. I second that emotion. Ooh. So Audrey will start for Arsenal, and that's not a great first ball. Yeah, uh, carry down coming into effect. Uh, Audrey tried to take a little move inside, and she is um, playing not in the sand, but she's playing in the oil and not getting that snap back, uh, kind of deviating from her down and in shot. And this is starting to be a little bit dangerous here because it seems like, oof, now may be very dangerous because it seems like both Geyer and Picone have figured out where to put the bowling ball. Mm -hmm, yes. His GPS is definitely set, and he is not missing any turns. His ball's turning just right and right on time. Yeah, McLovin is starting to McLove the oil pattern yeah. that he's dealing with right now. Let's see if that continues to happen here. First frame, game six. That looks good. It is. Yeah, McLovin from super bad situation to super good potential outcome. Well, right now it's super decent. I'm not going to say super good just quite yet. He's still got another two frames to go. Well, you know. But it's definitely not super yuck. Well, you know. He's gotten out of super yuck. That's right. Easy gets hard real quick, and Sweet can definitely turn sour. But hopefully not for power. Powerhouse, that is. That's Picone right now looking to double up. He does. Ooh. All of a sudden, here it comes Powerhouse. Uh -huh. and, and you know what I say? You know what my favorite thing in the world is. Oh, game three, four, seven. five, six, seven. I love me some game seven. That's good. Three sevens usually is a jackpot. Usually. Audrey, right now, again, you don't fall too far behind. Ooh, oh, is oil. she going to oh. Yes, she is. Everything goes down. Audrey with a strike. Went from eight to great. <laughs> yeah, Nick Evans just sitting there like, yeah, that's good. I like that. Third frame here. And again, it's real, real important for Arsenal that they keep the pressure on Powerhouse. You don't want to let them start freewheeling. We've already seen what happened on game five when they did that. And she leaves almost the same thing she did in the first frame. Except at least now it's not a split opportunity. It's makeable. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first one was makeable also, but this one's a little bit more makeable. Actually, also could be slightly more missable. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say more missable. Yeah, say slightly it? less missable. Audrey looking to make the spare. She will oh. very less mis missable for Audrey, and therefore not miserable. Exactly. Um, what I'm seeing. However, Picon can make them miserable yes, if he can. throws another strike. And I don't see Geyer anywhere, which leads me to believe that whatever happens in the third frame, Mr. Pacone will be bowling in the fourth frame. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, there he is. And there goes the pins, three in a row. Three in a McLovin. row. From There you go. And he's, through, yeah, he's throwing yeah, his he's, tape on. Yeah, he's not even looking for Rob. He's just like, yeah, I'll go. 
Rob, I'm pretty sure Rob will be back. He needs to be back. <laughs> not, not sure if he's going to be back. Eventually, he's going to have to be back. Mm -hmm. He may not be back for a while, though. Maybe he's gone to the bar. Maybe he's going to get a turkey burger. The turkey burgers here are really good, by the way. Really? A really good turkey well, burger. Let's hope Absolutely. that he's not a jive turkey on this shot. Not jive turkey. He's looking for a burger. Four in a row. Yeah, it's better to have a burger than to be one. That's true. Four in a row, and we see a tag immediately from Audrey to Nick. Mm -hmm. and now, what, now, what I'm seeing, the struggle that I'm seeing for Audrey, Audrey has a good line. I feel now is when she needs to go to that dull, early rolling piece, whatever dull, early rolling piece she may have to get past whatever's being sent her direction. Yeah, well, she has a good line, but it looks like Winnie may have done more Donald damage to Audrey than it's done to Powerhouse. Nick Gavin right now, there's a ball looking to get the strike, does not do it, 10 pin, and the mm -hmm. carry's not gonna get it. Now remember, Arsenal blew out Powerhouse in the first two games, never really let Powerhouse have a chance to get back in in the first two games. Yeah, early Winnie's deep coming deficit. out to meet the spare. Now it's, well, it would have made 7-10. <laughs> However, it looks like it could be Powerhouse's turn Powerhouse already up by at least 40, 50 pins. Yes. That's exactly what we're seeing right now. Potentially up by 52. Nick Gabin, fifth frame here, game six. That ball looks light, and it is. Early deep waters. Well, I would say they're in deep trouble unless Nick's strategy is okay. We'll see in game seven. Let's see what I can do right now and wreck everything and force you to transition earlier than what you like. Yeah. How um because he's sort of throwing the ball all over the place right now. It's an unenthusiastic uh, case of poetry because it's a, a very well situation that could resemble poo. It's Winnie's fault. Well, Winnie is not helping them get the win. Right? Matter of fact, it's helping Bacon yeah, yeah, stay everyone, in the game. Everyone blame the fictional characters. Everyone blame blood and honey. Yeah, fictional characters, but the fact is that oh, the oh. just let me split. Well, if we're going to keep on with the puns, there's Kanga on the left side and Rue on the right side. Oh, man. Kanga's just two pins because she's the adult and Rue's the kid. So that's only one pin. I'm a tag Robin for this. Well, we went from we'll see to, to game seven to wait a second. And I'll only make one. I sense we shall be seeing Rob Geyer very soon, and there he is. Mm -hmm. I would have tagged him in for that split. Eh, not much you can do there. Still, Powerhouse still up by 28. Still a very sizable lead, and we're in the sixth, and we're in the second half of Game Six. Powerhouse right, coming up. There's tag number one for them. Hmm. Three six. Well. Our house is still in a decent position. However, if they want to keep making mistakes. Yeah. Meanwhile, Nick Gavin's chatting a little bit to either Audrey or to somebody else. We haven't figured that out yet. But they are chatting a little bit of strategy here because they're sort of seeing what I'm seeing. Geyer makes the spare, but now all of a sudden, Arsenal with a double can start cutting into that lead. They have a 28 pin lead that can turn into a 13 pin lead. This is why this is yeah, one of the toughest up. divisions. Oh, yeah. Gavin's still up in the sixth frame, second half, game six. There's that shot. That looks buried. It is. Uh, High, tight, buried. Very good. And now the question becomes, are we seeing Audrey yet? The answer is no. Mm -hmm. Audrey quickly said, uh-uh. Uh. No, you'll see me later. You're not seeing me now. Yeah, I definitely like the change I saw there. Um, took a little a little move inside, slowed his feet down a little bit, gave it, gave it a little more of a hit, put a little more revs on it, and let the ball actually do the work rather than him overwork the ball. Yeah, I will, I will say this. If Nick throws another shot here, there's a very good chance we're not going to see Audrey until frame nine. And there we go. Yeah. Double for Nick Gavin. All of a sudden, it's under a 20-pin lead. Mm-hmm. For, for Powerhouse, and again, they've got to win this game. There is no next game for Powerhouse if they don't win this one. McLovin up. So it's either see you game seven or see you never. In the words of Paris Hilton. Yes, I quoted Paris Hilton. I feel sad. Ed does not feel, I'm sorry, not Ed. Robin does not feel sad. There's a strike for Pecone. And 
Uh, and you can see the joy in Pacone's face after that shot right there. Less than 20 pins. They're keeping him in there. Here's the eighth frame. Again, Geyer's got to get in there eventually. So if Geyer gets in, it'll be, the, it'll be the ninth frame. Yeah, there's a reason why a tag team is tough. Because, yeah, your guy's striking. But in the meantime, you got to find ways to keep yourself warm, not lose your own rhythm even off the lane. That's true. Yeah, that, that one's a little bit high. 310. Now, who's going to throw the spare here? We don't know yet. Now, this is a really, really important spare get because the only way they hold on to the lead is if they make the spare. If they don't, they're vulnerable to be surpassed. Makes a spare. Uh, yes. And it's a spare. It's a spare. The results are in. It's a spare. The results are in. It's a spare, except if Arsenal throws another strike here, they take control of this game. And I'll explain mom why momentarily. Mm -hmm. Audrey right now in eighth frame, third shot. The 10 pin falls down. Yeah, Huge guy. shot for the Arsenal. And now I will explain the importance of that. As Nick Gavin quickly comes in in the ninth frame. <coughs> A, the Arsenal takes the lead. B, and more importantly, if both teams go out the door, the Arsenal will win 235 to 233. And that will mean that is it. No game seven. Arsenal moves on to next month into the number one contenders match. Gavin right here looking to seal the deal. Four in a row for Arsenal. They seal the deal in the fact that they cannot get shut out and and basically they're in control of their own destiny. They are Again, in the driver's powerhouse seat. is gonna figure out what the heck they have to do and more importantly, they better figure out quickly. Yeah. Because they need strikes and almost nothing but. Yeah, we keep seeing shifts from passenger seat to driver's seat. See, back and forth games. See, saw a battle. What well, makes this fun? Here's Skyer looking for some sort of action going into the 10th. He gets it. Oh, he definitely gets it. Now, again, theoretically, Powerhouse is up by eight, but because they're only on one strike versus a double by the Arsenal, they are down two. Going into the 10th frame, and there was Geyer, as correctly predicted, and Picone will be finishing the game. That is their fourth tag. 2.33 if they go out, 2.35 if the Arsenal goes out. First shot here from Picone, almost pretty much has to have oh. he does. A little There's sloppy, a, looks good over there. He yeah. got the prayer sign up. Yep. Prayer hand emoji by Pacone. Prayer answered, at least temporarily. That first shot means Arsenal's got to show up in the 10th frame. Second shot here. Gets it. Gets the mix. That, that pretty much means Nick Gavin's got to go almost out the door. Two strikes and nine regardless. However, and a big however here, he can, if this is not a strike, Gavin can throw a little bit less. But not much. He still needs the first two strikes. Mm -hmm. the, real, the only real question is how much does Gavin need on the fill? Needs it all. No, he doesn't need it all. A, so a little bit of a cushion, except he's got to get there. So strike, strike, seven, it's over. Anything less than that, and it's either a tie or game seven. Yeah, he definitely wanted to strike there, because you, if you get a strike, you know, there's always a chance first two and then eight count, then roll off. But now... Well, seven count be roll off. First ball here, got to have first strike. Got it, that's one. I'm, I'm sorry, let me take that back. Seven or better is a winner. Six is a roll off. Mm -hmm. Anything less than that is a loss. However, he's got to get the second strike first. Second shot here again. Got to have it. He and does. He got it. 
Way to close it out. Now, shot here goes to Audrey. She's the last bowler. She's got to finish out. Keep in mind, Audrey has not shot a six or lower the whole entire match. So if that stays, this match is over. This is game, set, match. Nine, good enough. Arsenal will win 234 to 231. Mm. And that is game and match. Arsenal shall take it 4 to 2. And I believe that puts Arsenal in the number one contenders match in February. Yep. And with that, you want to have a chat with them? I would love to. Oh, then they're all yours. Have fun. All right, all right. All right. Hey, hey what's going on, guys? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, so shout out to the Arsenal over here, Audrey, Nick, number one contenders. They get a chance right now to get back what was theirs a couple times. How many times? Uh, we held it for a few months, and then we lost it, and we got it back once. So we've held it twice, once for a long time and once for a month, I think. Yeah. Oh, a couple months? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, we, want, we, we would like to have it back, so. <laughs> yeah, Will. Yeah, Will Harris. Oh man, that was. Oh man. Well, he keeps, talking, he keeps chirping on Facebook, so hopefully he holds it and we can bowl him, and then we can have a fun match. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah don't disappoint us, man. Don't disappoint us. Yeah, you know, segue into that. So let's talk about um, some of the train wreck situations that was happening up on there. Um, we saw, I saw that you utilized the, your Winnie the Pooh plastic over there. Maybe create a little a little uh, mixy situation over there on lane six, or were you just trying to search for a look that was predictable? Predictable yet powerful. No, the angle was burning up a little bit, and I tried to throw something a little cleaner, and it didn't work. The shot I thought was going to be good went right through the face, so I just went back to the angle. Stuck with it. All right. Well, moving forward, foresight. You got the titles in your sights. Um, any other words for the champions if they're watching, which I know you are. I know. Uh, I got nothing else to say. I just hope it's I hope it's Will because it'll be a fun match. <laughs> yep. I agree. Tiebreaker. We're one and one, so tiebreaker. <laughs> we won once against them and we lost once against them, so it is a tiebreaker, yep. So well, well, there you have it. Uh, they're going to bring the arsenal, they're going to load the cannons, and they're going to try to um, go right through the train, right? Should I take the train off the tracks? Right through the train, yes, right through the train. There you go. And, you know, you guys stayed on track, and you're back. And thanks for coming back with us. Hope you guys had a good time. I know I did. It was great. Saturday, Bowler City. Where, where else would you be? Well, I know where I'm going. To the bar. <laughs> and if you go into the bar, we'll see you at the bars and on the lanes at Unholy Alliance weekend of February 4th, UBA all day. This has been the voice of choice, Sean Dye Facing, standing here with the Arsenal. You know what it is. See you later on.